Today marks day 30. It's been one month since this whole fiasco began, but I had a really good morning. Uh, I woke up to hearing the group of turkeys going through this area, and uh, I thought about trying to be quiet about taking one down, but I, uh, I just really wanted to get that meat. So I just popped off a shot, I got one of them. I decided not to do any more than that because I really don't know that much about what I'm doing. I'm gonna be processing and preparing the turkey today, but most of what I know is really just book knowledge. I've you know, been a vegetarian for the past you know, 10, 15 years or so, and uh, I don't know that much about uh, you know, processing and preserving animal meat. So I'm gonna try it on this one, do the best I can, but I, I wouldn't wanna wipe out the entire group and lose all that resource. Turkeys tend to stay in the same area, so, you know, I'm sure we're going to cross paths again. So I figured it made the most sense to keep it alive. Um, aside from that, today I really thought it would make sense to go through, you know, all this stuff. I still have all that stuff that Monica and I had popped into the barrel. I mean, I've eaten through it. This is a lot lighter than it was before, but I only have the vaguest sense of how much food is in there. Uh, so I really want to catalog everything that I have. Uh, and try to get a sense of how many days I've got. Uh, that was never something I was particularly psyched about doing when, you know, I used to kind of have the prepping hobby and, and all that. You know, the idea of knowing exactly how many days of food I had, it was always fine for me to just kind of know. It's like, well, I've got lots. I've got lots of oats. I've got, you know, buckets and buckets and buckets of it and everything. But now that I don't have that much, I think it's kind of probably important for me to have a real sense of how much I've got of all this stuff. So I was going through uh, my pack and I remember I had little pencils and I've got my wallet and my wallet's got like papers and things. Is this of any value anymore? <laughs> I was trying to think about like some paper where I can make some lists. Um, I don't know, I, the, the money may still have barter value. Uh, the credit cards can probably go. But anyway, I've got some scraps of paper, receipts and things I can certainly spare. I'm gonna go through and uh, catalog everything that I've got today. But first, primary responsibility at this point is to take care of that turkey and get that meat preserved so that I can, uh, I can, you know, keep it. I, I don't think it would be a good idea to just gorge myself on the entire turkey all at once. Granted, I'm going to have a lot of it today. Uh, I thought maybe I'd make myself a little bit of soup, but I don't have canning materials. I can't can and process the turkey in that way. I'm going to have to dry it, and I think I'm going to try to do pemmican. That's a really simple recipe that I think even my simple brain can remember, and um, that's my plan. But first, I got to get that whole thing cleaned and disemboweled, which I'm really psyched about, especially because I don't have any latex gloves. For cleaning this turkey, I've got three main components here. One is the piece of string that I'm using to tie it up to this tree. The second is a knife. I would like to have some rubber gloves, but I don't. Uh, so my third component is hand sanitizer, and I pulled this out of my pack early so I don't have to go rifling through my pack later with disgusting hands, because my hands are going to get disgusting. Uh, so the first thing I have to do uh, now that I've got the thing up is to put away all the tools, really, and I just have to get all the feathers off of it. Uh, in the past, I've skinned uh, uh, turkeys and things like that that I've found as roadkill, uh, but this one I want to keep the skin on. Uh, I want to keep the fat content in the skin because that's one of the ingredients in making pemmican. You take the meat and you take the, the fat and you, you know, process them and then you combine them back together. So I want to preserve as much of that as I possibly can. So I'm going to start just by pulling all these feathers off of it. They actually come off pretty easily. Yeah, it's just these little bits, you got to pull the little quills out. This actually kind of reminds me why I, or one of the reasons why I wanted to become a vegetarian <laughs> in the first place is that this is pretty horrifying to do. I think, I think most people that eat meat don't really realize kind of what goes into it and the fact that it's actually death and killing uh, and kind of gross, to be honest. I mean, I'm 
tearing the feathers out of this creature's skin. Uh, I, I guess the proper way of doing this to make it really, really easy is to take the bird and you, uh, you kind of quick scald it in, in hot water and that's supposed to make this even easier, but this, this really isn't too bad. They, they're coming out pretty... <laughs> uh, they're floating around a little bit. Uh, but, you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's not too bad. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the areas that I'm essentially not going to be chopping off. Uh, I'm going to be cutting the legs off later, the tips of the wings I'm going to be cutting off, uh, I'm going to be cutting the head off. But anything that I'm not going to be cutting off that's going to go into the pot later to cook, uh, I want to get the feathers off. I don't know if there's any nutritional content to feathers. I probably not. I don't know. I, I can save them. I suppose they could be used for things like fishing lures. Actually, uh, that would be kind of a cool use for these. Probably use them for warmth. If I can get them into a bag, they make a nice little pillow or padding uh, insulation. So I think I'll be saving some of these. But uh, yeah, at the moment, I just want to get them off here. Okay, I've got this thing pretty well cleaned off. I guess I can pick at it more later, but right now what I want to do is uh, start getting some of the bigger feathers off. And I'm going to start with the tail. And the way that you find where to kind of cut on the tail is you'll see that the tail just sort of pivots around. That's how the, the male turkeys kind of display and kind of flash their feathers around. There's kind of a, a wiggle point right in there. And just take the knife and you kind of cut right around that. And Okay. Yeah, you can just break that, break that right off, and dispose of that. Uh, uh, okay, now I'm starting to get bloody. Uh, the next thing to do is to get the wings off, and I, I kind of tried tugging at these wing feathers, and they're not coming off that easily, so I'm gonna chop those off as well. And I'm just kind of saw through here. <coughs> Okay, this would be a good opportunity for hand sanitizer. Ugh. Well, now I've got most of the feathers off. It's pretty much all defeathered. Uh, I've got the the wings are off, the tail is off. Uh, I'm leaving the the head on for now. Uh, the next thing I want to do is the uh, uh, turkeys they have this area in their uh, kind of in their chest area, where when they eat things, they don't actually, well, they don't chew it up, uh, you know, and swallow it. They kind of just swallow it, and it goes into what's called their gullet, and that is like a storage area. It's kind of like a pre-stomach area where they can gobble up a bunch of stuff, and then they, uh, like, digest it later. So I'm going to cut open this area, and it's like right in their chest. I can feel kind of a soft spot right there. It feels like a balloon. I'm going to cut into that, and... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so clearly this, uh, the poor turkey, you can see it's, you can see what it had for breakfast this morning. It had a really nice morning. It had like some, some kind of leaves, these berries look like maybe barberries. It lucked out and it found a grasshopper. Uh, now I, I'm feeling sad, <laughs> I'm feeling kind of sad now because, I mean, it's like, it's kind of the story of this turkey's morning. It went around, it was foraging, it found these great berries, it found these great greens, and then it got, and then it got shot. Okay, well, anyway, I want to clear all that out. And feeling kind of gross and dirty again. It maybe isn't a bad time to hand sanitize again. Okay. And I'm glad I don't have any cuts on my hands or anything right now, because I'd be really worried if I didn't, if I had like an open wound doing this. I'd really prefer to have rubber gloves. Uh, okay, so the next step here is, uh, now that I've got all that cleared out, is I've got to do the really disgusting part, which is cutting out all the guts, disemboweling this thing. And the best way to do that is to take it and flip it the other way so the stuff drops out the bottom. So I'll take it and... Undo it. Okay, and I'm going to put the rope around the neck area and hang it by the neck. All right. And uh, and now the place to start cutting from is uh, well, I 
I usually kind of start down at the bottom in the limited numbers of times I've done this before, uh, kind of starting down by like the groin area, like if it was a person, uh, and then cutting up to kind of the, the sternum and just uh, opening up that area to, do oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, it kind of stinks too. Um, in the past I've done this with rubber gloves on, I don't have rubber gloves, so I guess I'm just going to use the knife and kind of scrape it out as best I can because when I shot this thing the bullet went through there could be broken splintered bones and things and the last thing I want to do is jab myself with a, uh, a sharp bone and kind of get injected with whatever is inside this turkey because turkeys are birds and they can carry diseases that humans can get okay Ugh. All right, there are some organs in here, too. I, you know, I'll be honest, I don't know, I don't know which ones are the I, okay ones to eat. I, I guess you can eat the heart, and you can eat the liver, but I, I wish I had that information about which one is which here, because I don't know what I can eat. So I think I'm just going to toss all this stuff. There's still a lot of meat here. That's kind of a waste, but I don't have the information right now to know what if this is okay so it's just it's all gonna come out I don't want to accidentally eat something that makes me sick later on the intestines are fairly obvious you don't eat the intestines <laughs> um, or at least not with what's inside of them but uh, yeah okay all right uh, I think I've got pretty much everything out of there um, so the next next step here is I'm gonna uh, I guess chop off, uh, take it down, I'll chop off the head, I'll chop off the legs, and uh, and then I'm going to start cooking it in a pot and uh, getting the meat off of this. At this point I have the turkey completely cooked and now is time to really prepare the individual ingredients of the pemmican for being turned into pemmican. And the two basic ingredients are really, really dried out meat and fat, rendered fat. Uh, I've got the bones and all the skin and everything in this pot and I'm going to try to just cook that down until it's just fat. The idea is you want to get rid of the moisture and just have the fat left over. I don't know how much fat is really on this turkey. It's not like a, you know, a bison where there's, you know, giant chunks of like clear fat that you can separate out. I guess I'm going to give it a try, but independent of whether or not I'm going to be able to get enough fat out of this, I can certainly dry out the meat and drying out the meat and I even put some salt on it when I was cooking it, so drying and salting the meat uh, is going to make it last a lot longer than if I just, you know, left it without that. The ace that I have up my sleeve is this rack that I grabbed from that junk pile the other day. I think it's an old refrigerator shelf or something. I didn't want to use it when I was doing the water distilling to hold up the pot because these bars are so thin. I was afraid that they would get destroyed by the, the high heat of that um, uh, Dakota fire hole that I'd created. But for this, just having it over a low fire, that, that's going to be a great use of this. So I'm going to set this down right here. And what I want to do is, uh, you know, just set everything up on here so that they can just slowly uh, bake away. I've got a bunch of the strips here. I've been uh, taking them, and you want to take the pieces of turkey and just break them up into the smallest pieces you really can that aren't going to fall through your rack. I'm just going to lay them out on here. And the idea here is to get them to a point where they will they'll kind of crackle in your hand. You can snap them. You don't want it to be bendable at all. You want these to be just completely dry to the point where they will crack in your hand. And um, actually kind of making them to the point where they're not particularly delicious anymore. But the nutrition will be kept in there. The calories will be kept in there. And I guess I'll take this and set that. And I just want that to do a low simmer. But this is going to take a while. It takes a long time for all the, the moisture to come out of these and for everything to render up and um, actually it would probably be better with the lid off because I'm trying to get the moisture out of there. Okay, so that's the deal. I have to have them sit here for quite some time though and uh, just dry out. 
Well, I've got the turkey drying over here and the fat's all rendering. I figured this would be a good opportunity since that's going to take a couple hours to catalog the food that I've got, uh, just so I have some sense of how many meals I have left. Uh, I have that pencil I had from earlier and just grab the check from my wallet. Don't think I'll be needing this. And uh, what I'm going to do, I've got a lot of these Mylar bags of food. I haven't used them much because I've been traveling a lot. Uh, and I, I don't want to open these because you know, it's starting to drizzle a little right now and I don't want to get moisture in here. Uh, but what I figured I'd do is just sort of mentally, visually grid them up into like meal-sized cubes and use multiplication to kind of figure out how many meals I have in there. I don't exactly know, you know, how many calories I need or, uh, you know, how many calories each of these foods is going to give me. That's information I just don't have access to right now. And information is a big thing that I feel like I'm lacking at the moment. Even doing that pemmican. Pemmican's a super simple recipe, but you know, even for that, I would have loved to have popped on a YouTube video prior to starting that process just to confirm that I'm doing it properly. You know, a month ago, that wouldn't have been any big thing. You know, just getting access to all that information, you just go, you know, online, on YouTube or whatever, and you can get all this knowledge. And I don't have anything but what's in my head right now. I was trying to think about, like, what is actually the last YouTube video that I watched? It wasn't one on pemmican making. Um, but it wasn't one on like the top 10 cutest dogs either. It was something sort of appropriate to my situation right now. It was a Canadian prepper video. And, uh, you know, at the time when I was watching it, I didn't think that it was super relevant to me, but now it totally seems really appropriate to my situation. And it was about the idea of, you know, as all of us preppers may be thinking that we were a lot more prepared than we really were for all this. I, uh, when I was watching it, I, I did not necessarily think that it was applying to me directly. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to talk about the difference between theory and reality when it comes to imagining yourself within a SHTF scenario. So obviously the discrepancy between these two things is going to dictate your survivability. Meaning that if you have a lot of theoretical knowledge of SHTF, and that greatly aligns with your realistic capabilities, then you're probably good to go. Even if you are aware of your shortcomings, so even if you're not prepared, but you know you're not prepared, uh, that can be advantageous as well, because you're gonna know your limitations. And of course, in the lead up to whatever potential collapse may be coming, uh, you're gonna be able to know which areas you need to hone in on. So you're not gonna be deluding yourself into thinking that you know, you're gonna just be a security expert all of a sudden, or that you're gonna be a professional gardener all of a sudden. So we all have our own delusions when it comes to our capabilities. This is why it's very important to take an honest look at what your strengths and weaknesses are. I'm sure there's a psychological term for this, but there's a tendency of people to block out uh, aspects of themselves they'd rather not look at. And I think when it comes to this kind of stuff, that might be areas where you really need to improve at. And for whatever reason, you just don't want to think about it. You repress it. You feel that you're going to rise to the occasion when it gets there. But I'm telling you, man, there's a lot of people out there, myself included, that if crap hit the fan tomorrow, I don't know how long I would make it. And if I don't know how long I would make it, and there's a bunch of people looking up to me to figure out how long they could make it, then <clears throat> there's gonna be a lot of people who are in trouble. And I just say that honestly, you know, sure, any old middle of the road prepper can survive weeks or even months off of their prepping supplies. But after that, in dealing with all the threats which may arise, including the different social threats, and we all know preppers aren't the most social of individuals. So you got to take inventory of your capabilities. Just one sec, I keep getting text on my phone here there's something going on in the u.s in major cities look i'm getting a lot of alerts here anyways probably just the same old same old you know how it always is people overhyping it you know the collapse is going to blindside us you know we're not going to we're going to least expect it and it's going to happen and all of this you know we're going to wonder um how our fellow youtube comrades are doing out there when it finally does happen I i've thought of making a video about that before of you know, I wonder, you know, when, if and when the collapse happens, what are the people out there who I've never met, who I've interacted with on YouTube, how well they're going to fare? 
And, you know, maybe it'd be nice to set up some sort of ham network at some point, which uh, connected us all together. There's a thought for you. Anyways, I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The last few pieces of turkey are coming off the, the grate here, and overall it's worked out pretty well. They've really crisped up to the point where they snap when you break them. All the moisture's been driven out, and between that and the salting, just this alone, without the fat or anything like that, forget pemmican, you know, this is going to you know, really preserve this stuff for a while. I'm still going to try to do a little pemmican, I guess, because uh, you know, I do have some fat, I want to preserve you know, the calories in there, but I, I certainly don't think I have enough of it to do all of this stuff. So maybe, you know, maybe it would work better with like bison or something where there's huge pieces of fat, but with this, it just doesn't seem like there's enough. But I feel really happy that I've been able to get these guys kind of uh, preserved so that I'm not going to be losing the calories and the nutrition in here. And overall, I'm feeling pretty shit. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.